Things They Don't Tell You About Cruise Ships, Part 1. The bathrooms are tiny, so tiny, and the toilet sounds like this. Things they don't tell you about cruise ships, part two. The walls and doors are magnetic. So when they build cruise ships, they build the frame within the shipyard, but then the individual cabin pieces are built offsite. And once the ship is pretty much completed, they slap them in, almost like building with Legos. And what that means on most ships, the walls and cabin doors are going to be magnetic. Now, why does that matter? Well, what it means is you can bring fun accessories like these hooks, these magnetic hooks that add more storage and more hang up space to your cabin. You can also bring magnetic decorations for your door. Now, some cruise lines don't allow that, for instance, Virgin Voyages, so make sure you check the rules before decorating your door, but otherwise, bring lots of hooks. Things they don't tell you about cruise ships, part three where to find things. On my last cruise, on the last day of the cruise, so many people were walking around the ship commenting on different spaces. Oh, I had no idea this was here. And it's totally understandable. You rush on board, you're just trying to figure out where you are, where to get lunch, then you have to find your cabin, then you have to find where you're gonna have dinner, maybe trying to find where the show is, and you don't really take time to investigate everything that's around you. So I'm going to help you with four tips to find your way around the ship. Number one, if you get a paper copy, use this as your guide, almost like a checklist to make sure you've seen everything. So if you want to find all the bars and lounges, look at this list and then go to each one. And then that way you'll make sure you've seen them all. Tip number two, find a deck plan. So you can download a deck plan before you leave. We include it in all of our clients' itineraries, or you can find it in the app, or there may be even one on the ship near the elevators. This will give you a great sense of what's on each deck. The third way is just to go deck by deck. So start at the top of the ship once you get on board and just walk each deck all the way down until you've seen them all. If that's too much all in one go, it usually takes about an hour on the larger ships. You can just do a deck a day and try to investigate and see all of the different lounges, bars, activities within the ship. And tip number four, watch a video before you go. I post cruise ship tours on the Trips with Angie YouTube channel. There's lots of YouTube videos out there giving you different ship tours, and that will help you find some of the more hidden gem areas that may not be on a list. So for instance, on most pool decks, there's going to be an area with lounge chairs that isn't used very much. It's not gonna be right by the pool. It's usually gonna be kind of around the corner, either towards the front or the back of the ship. And that can be a great hidden gem if you're looking for a quiet place to just enjoy the views of the ocean. Things they don't tell you about cruise ships, part four. What beverages are included? On the major cruise ship lines, Carnival, Royal Caribbean, Norwegian, Princess, Holland America, the included beverages are going to be coffee, tea, ice water, lemonade, iced tea, some type of fruit punch, and some type of juices in the breakfast area. And that's it. So you'll see a lot of chatter about beverage packages. So are they worth it? That really depends on how much you drink. So glasses of wine on a typical cruise ships are gonna be between 10 and $14 per glass. Beers are gonna be between seven and 12. Cocktails are gonna be between 12 to 16. So it's up to you to really think about how much you're gonna consume and whether or not the package will be worth it. Now, a lot of people just buy the package anyway or book under a promotion that includes the beverage package so they don't have to worry about having a large bill at the end of their cruise. Because they don't tell you about cruise ships, part five, what you can order. On most major cruise ships, you're gonna have three categories of included dining. One is the buffet. The second is quick service, meaning you just go up to a grill and grab a hamburger or a slice of pizza. And the third is the main dining room. In the main dining room or restaurant, you have the option of anytime dining, where you can just walk up, get a pager, request a table. Then on some cruise ships, you have set dining, where each evening you'll go in at the same time at the same table with the same waiter. In the main dining room for dinner, you can order anything on the menu. So if you wanna have more than one appetizer, if you wanna have more than one dessert, 
go for it. Now, when it comes to main entrees, you have to be a little bit careful. Some cruise lines do require you to pay extra for a second main entree or require that you eat the first main entree before you get the second one. So just ask your waiter what the rules are for your particular cruise line. You can also usually order the pasta dish on the main entree menu as an appetizer. If you have major food preferences or allergies, you can pre-order. So just let the waiter know and the maitre d' will come over with tomorrow's menu. You can look at order over and pre-order according to your dietary restrictions or preferences. Also, when you're ordering your dinner, take a look at what sides are available. You can order a side of steamed vegetables. If you see mashed potatoes are available on a meal, you can order a side of mashed potatoes too. Things they don't tell you about cruise ships, part six, getting off the ship. So when you board, you'll be given a card, or in the case of Princess, a medallion. Now this is going to be everything to you. It'll open your cabin door, it will allow you to charge things on board, and most importantly, it is your way on and off the ship. They will scan your card, and this is how they'll know you're off the ship, and they'll scan it to get back on. When you go ashore in 90% of the countries you will visit on a cruise ship, it is not necessary to take your passport. So leave it in the safe in your room. That way you don't have to worry about getting wet, dirty, or stolen. You should bring some type of photo ID. We bring our driver's license because if you lose this card, you need to show the cruise line who you are and to make sure that you can get back on board. The other thing you want to be sure to do is to check local regulations. Camouflage clothing is not allowed in most Caribbean islands. If you're heading somewhere that's beachy, you definitely want to take your towel with you. And then it's always good to bring a bottle of water. Things they don't tell you about cruise ships, part seven, they make mistakes. <gasps> Can you believe it? So it's really important to check your account as you're going through the cruise. You can do that via the app on most cruise lines or just going up to guest services and having them print out a copy of your bill. Do this every couple of days so you're not ending up the last night of the cruise standing in a long line of guest services trying to resolve any issues. Things they don't tell you about cruise ships, part eight, the shower. The shower works a little differently than on land. So one side will control the temperature and it will show you what the temperature is going to be in Celsius. So if you want to go back for cold or for hot, and then one side turns the shower on and off. Now, most cruise lines will include some type of soap, but you're definitely wanna, gonna wanna bring your own shampoo and conditioner. Things they don't tell you about cruise ships, part nine, how they promote the crew. The crew on board sign on to contracts, usually between seven to nine months. One of the key factors in any of their promotions or special perks is going to be guest feedback. You can sign a little note to guest services, highlighting a crew member that has gone above and beyond for you in service. And more importantly, when you get the survey in your email following a cruise, please fill it out and put down the names of anyone who gave you special service. This will go in their HR file and it's tremendously important. We take pictures of people's name tags. We write notes as we're going through the cruise to make sure that we list all of the crew members that made a difference in our cruise. Things they don't tell you about cruise ships, part 10. And this is going to seem like a dumb one, but it's a ship. There's going to be motion in the ocean. Plans are going to change based on weather. I see a lot of people in the Facebook groups that are so disappointed that the ship starts rocking or that they're not able to dock at a certain island because of a storm. You are on a moving vessel and it truly is the captain's number one priority to get you safely back to port. So keep that in mind as you're planning this type of vacation. You may get a little seasick if you're susceptible to motion sickness. You may not get to that island you really wanted to go to if if a storm rolls in.